Hello everyone, today in the series of Doplex Scale Interviews, we have with us a very special guest, Dr. Manisha Sahar. She is the head of nephrology at Usmania Medical College and Usmania General Hospital in Hyderabad. Thank you so much, Doctor, for this interview. Yeah, so let's my begin. pleasure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So let's begin with the first question. Can you brief us about SGLT2 inhibitors and diabetic ketoacidosis in patients with type 2 diabetes? So the name seems to be difficult to pronounce for you as it must be for most of the other people. It's SGLT2 inhibitors which stand for sodium glucose transport inhibitors. So these are new kids on the block. They are newer drugs and they are newer varieties of anti-diabetic drugs. So you may ask what's so special about that? We have around 10 types of drugs for diabetes already. So why are these drugs so important? In fact, they are very important. They are being touted as molecules of the decay. And you may wonder why a nephrologist is asked to speak about these. So that should give you a clue that these drugs not only control diabetes, but they are very helpful in prevention of diabetic kidney failure. Diabetic kidney failure is the commonest cause of kidney failure in our country. And you would be surprised to know that about one black Indians develop di diabetic kidney failure every year, which is more than any other country in the world. Diabetic kidney failure is a very bad disease to have because it causes a huge burden on the country's economy, on the patient's homes. It also leads to a lot of cardiovascular deaths. These diabetic patients do not fare well on dialysis as well. And hence, diabetic kidney disease should be retarded at any cost. And you may wonder whether all diabetics will develop diabetic kidney disease. It's not so. But a majority of them, almost 40 to 50 percent, develop this dreaded complication of diabetic kidney disease. And hence, it's very essential that we have some medicines to control these diseases. So one of the drugs we had till now was ACE inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blocker. These were the only drugs to control the development of kidney disease in a diabetic till now, apart from lifestyle modifications, that is salt restriction, control of hypertension, control of lipids, um, uh, healthy lifestyle, less salt, etc. So apart from that, we had these ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers. And it's exciting to have another drug, the SGLT2 inhibitors, which control diabetes. And not only that, they control the development of kidney disease as well. So yeah, I'm very excited about these drugs. Uh, you mentioned about uh, diabetic ketoacidosis yeah. as well. Yeah. So each good thing has a bad side to it as well and one of the bad sides to diabetic uh, drugs this is SGLT2 drugs is their propensity to cause uh, ketoacidosis mm. this ketoacidosis is different from diabetic ketoacidosis diabetic ketoacidosis is associated with high levels of blood sugar whereas these drugs cause ketoacidosis with normal level of blood sugar that's called euglycemic ketoacidosis but it is equally life-threatening. Mm. And this occurs because these drugs cause a lot of glucose loss in the urine. And as a result, they increase the production of counter-regulatory hormones, for example, glucagon. And this gives rise to lipolysis and increased ketogenesis. So this is one complication which we should be on the lookout for. It's much more common in type 1 diabetics rather than type 2 diabetics. There are certain risk factors. All patients do not develop this diabetic ketoacidosis because if you use them wisely, the risk is very low. The risk factors for this complication are very high level of blood sugars. If the person is dehydrated, if the person is having infection, those who abuse alcohol, those who are on steroids, those who are going for any complicated surgeries. So these are seven, eight um, risk factors where you should be careful and avoid the use of these drugs. But by and large, these drugs are quite safe for use in type 2 diabetics and in some cases of type 1 diabetics, provided you take care of the hypoglycemia. Okay. Uh, so, I would like to know the basic mechanism and therapeutic perspectives of diabetic ketoacidosis in response to SGLT2. So, as I already yeah. highlighted, that the basic mechanism by which these drugs act are 
they cause lot of glucose loss from the kidney and because of glucose loss there is reduced level of blood sugar this reduced level of blood sugar causes an increase in the counter regulatory hormones especially glucagon goes up this leads to lipolysis in addition these drugs cause lot of sodium loss in the urine and in such patients there is increased absorption of ketone bodies from the urine as well this adds to the level of ketone bodies in the blood so increased production of counter regulatory hormones decrease in insulin because we often reduce the dose because sugars become normal and the absorption of ketones from urine these are the three major mechanisms which cause increased levels of ketones in the blood despite there being a normal blood sugar if you can just tell us about any um, you know from your experience any challenging case that you've come across yeah so as i said see diabetic kidney disease is uh, very important for the physicians as well as for the endocrinologists and diabetologists and always in rss bi or such conferences you have a session of diabetic nephropathy because this disease needs to be detected at all costs it's giving a huge load to the country's economy we have dialysis centers running full morning afternoon night evening shift full of dialysis patients and transplants also are going on but again we can transplant only so much we cannot do a more number of transplants the donors are scarce so the best option for diabetic kidney disease is prevention and we are very excited about the emergence of these new drugs because these new drugs uh, they are very unique they do not depend on insulin for their action unlike any of the other anti diabetic drugs the main mechanism of action is they cause lot of glucose loss in the urine and i am surprised that nobody ta- nobody thought about this mechanism to reduce blood glucose diabetes has been discovered so long ago but these drugs have been discovered recently and one exciting thing is that though they are anti diabetic drugs there are studies going on where these drugs are used in non diabetic patients to prevent the progression of kidney disease so overall they are very much nephroprotective and in nephrology we feel that these drugs are ready for prime time okay all right uh, thank you so much for the interview it was a pleasure having you here. thank you